Hello everyone, welcome back to our lecture series. Emeka Udenze is speaking once again. Today we'll be talking about factors affecting enzyme activity. So that will be our topic today. So if you don't want to use the word, like I said again, if you don't want to use the word enzyme activity, you can say factors affecting enzyme catalysis. And the picture I have here is, uh, it's uh, a diagram or a graph of rate of an enzyme reaction versus substrate. The rate of an enzyme is usually the velocity. So velocity is the rate of an enzyme. Yeah. So that is exactly what I have here. And if you look at it, I have maximum velocity and I have a curve. You know, you see that it was increasing at a point, it flattened. So we're going to talk about this curve again, particularly by the time we get into this. But this is just like a very good uh, depiction of what we're going to be seeing. So because we're talking about those factors that's going to affect how fast or how slow an enzyme will act. All right, let's take it off from there immediately. I have a beautiful quote from a Nobel laureate, one of the greatest scientists that ever lived. Uh, Francis Crick. Francis Crick was a British molecular biologist, a biophysicist, and a neuroscientist. Uh, he was awarded uh, a Nobel Peace Prize in Physiology and Medicine together with uh, uh, Watson and uh, Maurice Wilkins for their discovery of a uh, molecular structure of the nucleic acid and its significance as informational material in uh, gene transfer. In fact, that is why we usually say the Watson and Crick, Watson and Crick structure, double helical structure of the DNA. Let's hear what he has to say. He said, chance is the only source of novelty. If you want to do something new, if you want to do something special, you have to take the chance to do it. You have to have the courage to take that chance. Once again, chance is the only source of novelty. And this is a food for thought. Let's immediately get into the class. Uh, we have just one objective to uh, cover in this lecture, which is we're going to, at the end of this class, we'll be able to describe the factors that affect enzyme activity. And there are such factors we're going to be looking at as we're going to see as we move on. Okay. Factors affecting enzyme activity. Number one, let's start with the first one, the enzyme concentration. You see... Increase in enzyme concentration E, so in this case, I will, I will always say square bracket E, that means concentration, enzyme concentration. So increase in enzyme concentration will increase the concentration of the enzyme substrate complex. Remember when we talked about the mechanism of enzyme, we said that it is crucial that the enzyme substrate complex forms because it is the formation of the enzyme substrate complex is the what we call the rate limiting step for the formation of the product. If you can form as more of this, it's going to break down to release the product, which is, of course, the ultimate aim for an enzymatic reaction for you to be able to catalyze a reaction and get it into completion. So the increase in this enzyme concentration will increase the concentration of this ES complex and hence will increase the rate of that reaction. So the rate of reaction, what it simply means is that it's directly proportional to the to the enzyme concentration. So the higher the enzyme concentration, the higher the reaction rate. And that is why you see that this is what? A, a straight line from the origin at this point, you're just starting, is a straight line. So if you increase this guy as it's increasing, as the concentration is increasing, the rate of the enzyme is also increasing as well. And in fact, you can use the Le Chatelier's principle to explain this. The Le Chatelier's principle explains how a system in equilibrium is affected by different changes of perturbations, either to the right or to the left. So increase in this enzyme concentration, you're going to have a lot of concentration of enzyme here, destabilizing this equilibrium. Remember, this equilibrium. So what are you going to do? To reduce this concentration of the enzyme, the equilibrium will have to do what? Shift to the right. So what it simply means is that, let me remove this, is that this equilibrium will have to shift to the right to normalize the concentration of this, the, con the concentration of this enzyme that has been increased. And bring so if it goes to the right, it will lead to the formation of ES complex. And the more the ES complex is formed, the more the product is released, an enzyme is released to get into the next cycle of reaction. When I go to the second one, substrate concentration. Now, substrate concentration does look a little bit similar to what we have in the enzyme concentration, but it's different because at a point this rate levels out. So the initial rate 
of an enzyme catalyze the initial, that's always the word, initial rate of an enzyme catalyzed reaction increases with increase in substrate concentration. Yes, if you look at this, let's look at this graph, the red versus substrate concentration. Now, the initially, it as you're increasing this, it increases just like we had in the previous page. But at a point, look at, at this point, at this point, now what happens? It begins to level out. So you are still increasing the concentration, but there's no effect because the red flattens at this. And this pl place whereby this red does not change again fl or flattens is what we call the maximum, is what we call the maximum velocity or the maximum rate has been achieved. Why is this happening? Now, it is happening because at that point, the substrate has completely saturated or covered the active site that increase in substrate concentration doesn't have any effect because it doesn't have any other space to occupy because all the active site, which I told you is usually a tiny portion, has been occupied by the previous substrate that already went there. And therefore, if you increase the concentration, nothing actually happens. So let me finish what I have in my note. At a certain at a certain concentration, the red, this red, at a certain concentration, the red levels out and remains constant. And at that place, we say that the maximum rate has occurred, has been achieved. And this maximum rate occurs because the enzyme has been, the enzyme itself is fully saturated with the substrate at its active site. And no matter how much substrate you increase, you put more, the effect will amount to nothing because all, because it has been occupied. So the next time it's going to go up again is when all the substrate occupying that, sub, that active site has been converted to product. That is when this increase will begin to happen again so again like we had in the other one if you increase this of course as usual you're going to shift the equilibrium to the right to form the es complex and the more es complex you form the more product you also form however like i said this is going to level out at some certain point and that is why here we have what uh, this is not you have a straight line here but it becomes it curves at this point or you can say this is a hyperbolic curve more or less all right when i go to the next one the temperature you see um temperature temperature the temperature of the body is doesn't fluctuate to very extremes because the enzymes themselves are very delicate and only work at a restricted temperature range so the rate of enzyme catalyzed reaction will initially increase with increase in temperature until we get to the optimum temperature the optimum temperature is the temperature at which the enzyme has its most activity so at which at this optimum temperature which is usually from 25 degrees celsius to 40 degrees celsius at this point at this optimum temperature you the enzyme witnesses its highest activity however beyond this temperature or above this temperature the enzyme loses its activity and in fact denatures completely so the reaction rate is lower or higher above or below this optimum temperature value and of course, beyond this temperature, the enzymes does what is denatured or destroyed. We talked about denaturation already, whereby the enzyme loses its three-dimensional structure and hence its function. So what happens? The enzyme loses its 3D structure and therefore its functions. And if you look at what I have here, look at what I have here. This is the optimum temperature at the top. So let me say the average temperature here, if you check the average of this, will come here about at 7 degrees Celsius. Now, you see, initially, it started by increasing a little bit until it gets to this point. But the moment it gets to this point and increases higher, you see, it drops very fast that at this point, the enzyme will not even function again at all. So this is the optimum temperature at which the enzyme will function. And beyond this point, the enzyme itself will be the natural. So here is usual, is the below the optimum temperature. Here is above the optimum temperature. And if you look at both above and below, the activity of the enzyme is going to drop. All right, we now go to the last, but not the least, of these factors affecting the rate of an enzyme reaction is the pH. Now, the pH has exactly the same trend as the temperature because P enzymes themselves only function in a tight or narrow pH range. Now, they are less active at pH values that are lower or higher than the optimum pH. And what is the optimum pH? The optimum pH is usually a pH of about, most enzymes will function at about 7.35 to 7.45 pH range. The average of this is about 
6.4 and most enzymes in the particularly enzymes in the cells enzymes in the in, in in the blood and a lot of other enzymes want to function at this ph mark however the some enzymes differ depending on the some enzymes have some specialized locations in the body which also affect the temp, which also affect the ph in which they are going to be operating with now see what happens here example pepsin is a gastric enzyme that is found in the stomach and it is part of the gastric juice what happened the gastric juice is secreted at a ph of about 1 to 2.5 which is highly acidic so beyond this acidic temperature the pepsin itself which is a protease enzyme the protease enzyme would not function proper like i said it depends on the location of that particular enzyme in the body however most enzymes most enzymes will usually function at a ph of 7.4 and again if you look at it here now at this at about 7.4 here you the, you record the maximum ph of most enzymes now so above now see below this that activity will begin to drop and above this that activity will begin to drop however remember again just to mention it again some of them too have some exceptions like the pepsin which is part of the gastric juice that is secreted in an acidic environment for it to what perform its function and having said that we've come to the end of this lecture thank you for listening bye